Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, for this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For the word says, I will give thanks to the Lord my God with my whole heart. For in the company of God we gathered to worship and to honor our Savior. For this Father's Day we greet you, we welcome you, and we know that you will be blessed today. say that God has been everything to you. God is the strength of my life. He's the joy of my salvation. He is with me as I deal with the struggles and stresses of this world, the senseless killings of our black and brown brothers and sisters, the COVID-19 pandemic, the closed minds and hearts of people who just don't understand Amen, amen. God is our all in all. Eternal God, because you are our creator and our sustainer, you are our beginning and our end. We thank you. And God, we acknowledge that without you, we would not be here. So we thank you for coming into our living rooms and coming into our dens, coming, God, into our automobiles, coming, God, into a space and a place that you have already ordained. And God, as we continue to worship you, we ask that not our will, but let thy will be done. God, somebody is hurting today, so we pray that you will heal. God, another somebody is going through, so we pray that you will help them come out of. God, we ask that you will touch our sons and our daughters, our aunts and our uncles, our brothers and our sisters, our parents and our grandparents. God, we ask that your spirit will continue to minister to so many who find themselves distant from you. And Lord God, those who are on the battlefield and God, those who are faithful, we pray that they are encouraged and God, they are strengthened. God, their power is renewed from on high. God, we know that you know the end before the beginning, so we ask that you would be with us right now. And whatever moment right now is, let your will be done. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts continue to be acceptable in your sight. Our strength and our redeemer and our rock. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And my friends, as we come to God today, we are indeed grateful for all that we've seen and heard. We thank God for our musicians, our technicians, for Dr. Tammy and leading us in prayer. And we thank you for praying and being a worshiping community uh, in a virtual way, but also in a spiritual way. We ask now that you will hear the word of God as it comes to us from the first book of Kings, 1 Kings chapter 19 reading verses 1 through 9 from a New Living Translation. Let us hear the word of Almighty God. Now when Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the God strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. 
Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servants there. Then he went on along into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, Get up and eat. He looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. And the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. And there he came to a cave where he spent the night. But the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to focus in with me to verse 7 of chapter 19, for it serves as our sermonic text for this preaching moment. For the word says, Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. With the aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to lift up this text and for a brief moment preach on our subject today, get up, get up. My friends, it's easier said than done. It's less painful to talk about than to accept. But let me just acknowledge the important fact at the onset of this sermon, and that is into each life some rain must fall. And behind every success, somebody can give a testimony about their struggle. Have I got a witness right there? Let me say it this way. For, for, for every resume and cover letter that talks about success, there is also a file folder and an envelope that contains your mishaps and your mistakes, your faults, and your fumbles, your hangups and your hangouts, your woulda, coulda, shoulda, and I show no hope they never find out I did you know what with you know who. Somebody say, I know that's right. Because uh, you see, if the truth be told, and, and I don't want to confess by myself, but there is some stuff that you should definitely not post. And there are some situations that are best left in the closet. Somebody say, leave them in the closet. Matter of fact, just type in closet right now. You see, church, I believe that it's more safe to say than, than there is somebody watching right now who knows a thing or two about winning and losing, about success and failure, about cheerleaders and critics, about haters and celebrators. Somebody watching right now, you know that you can't have one without the other. You don't get the prize without the pain. You receive the crown after the challenge and your miracle is oftentimes hidden in your mess. And it is, church, that, that, that that's where we oftentimes get inspiration. It is, for me, that's where I get inspired. Yes, first and foremost from the word of God, but secondly, I get inspiration by watching the word come to life in people. Particularly, I like getting inspiration from people who as soon as they come out of one battle with some modicum success, they have to face another battle leaning even more on the power of the Lord. I, I get inspiration when folk go from treatment to treatment, but they still give God praise. I get motivation when people go from heartache to heartache, but they still know that God is in the center of their heart. I get excited, my friends 
friends, when people come up the rough side of the mountain and with a smile on their face, lace up their boots and climb up the mountain one more time. For you see, that's what faith is. That's what endurance is. That's what staying strong with the Lord is. For is that not what we read in the Bible, the holy word of God about David, who on one day he's taking care of sheep, but on the next day he's fighting a giant. On one day he's playing his harp, but on the next day he's dodging Saul. <clears throat> On one day, he's writing about deer, but on the next day, he's killing lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Success followed by a challenge. Is that not, y'all, what we read about Joseph, who on one day, he's the favorite son, but on the next day, his brothers call him a son of a one day. He's got a coat of many colors on his back, but the next day, he's got chains of slavery on his legs. One day, he's a personal assistant. The next day, he's in prison. One day, he's remembered. The next day, he's forgotten. And again, here it is, success followed by a challenge. And my friends, that is where we roll up on today's text, examining the life of Elijah, having come off a mighty victory. But now Elijah sees himself following success with another challenge. And let me go ahead and give you the meat of this text because I think it's strong enough to make its own gravy. Here it is. Your get up, y'all, it starts with presence, preparation, and purpose. Again, presence, preparation, and purpose. For verse 1 of 19, chapter 19, gives us, y'all, uh, an account of the escapades as well as the excitement of this mighty prophet of Almighty God. It is having re recently come from the rumble in the jungle, the thriller from Manila, the throwdown at the hoedown where fire fell from heaven on Mount Carmel and the false gods and all of the prophets of Baal were burned up. It is here that we find Elijah. Success, y'all, followed by a challenge. But do note, this is the same Elijah who in 1 Kings chapter 17, in the midst of a famine, that God provided him nutrition. God gave him something to eat, sending food delivered by a raven. Now don't miss that. That's a life-giving substance being delivered by a bird that makes this living hanging around dead stuff. Success followed by a challenge. That is the same Elijah we're talking about, where in 1 King the word says, and the brook dried up. Oh, hear me what I'm saying, because in the midst of a drought and a famine, y'all, Elijah went to a widow's house where she had only a little bit of oil and some little flour left. But again, if it's God's will, it's God's bill. If it's God's vision, it's God's provision. And the word says that the flour didn't run out and the oil in the middle of a drought kept on flowing. Success, y'all, Followed by a challenge. So it is, I guess, you should not be surprised when we come to the text today that after a whooping up of the false prophets of Baal and after beating down the false gods of Jezebel, Elijah has another success followed by a challenge. Exegeting verses 1 and 2, it tells us, Dr. Tammy, that though Elijah had won a great victory, he had also ticked off vicious Queen Jezebel. Her God, Jezebel's God that is, had been mocked and her prophets had been killed, all because of this upstart new prophet of the Lord. Her gods that were all about wealth and materialism. Her prophets who always told her what was right in her eyes and never questioned her when she was wrong had been mocked and had been killed. Her gods that were made of the image of what she liked. Her prophets who continued to go along with her, her sadistic plans, her egotistical propaganda, her, her promotion in a pandemic of sin that ruled the land, her gods had been mocked and had been killed. 
And it was because of the embarrassment of the loss of her gods. It was because her prophet said she was not high in the polls that she put out a hit, y'all, on the prophet of Almighty God. And don't miss this, friends, because with her finite ability and the use of the National Guard, she threatened this prophet of Elijah to like the prophets of old to have him killed. Matter of fact, she said that before the sun falls tomorrow night, I swore before God, as we say in the hood, you're going to be dead. This was, this was Jezebel going after Elijah. This was quite a reversal of fortune, shall we say, for this prophet because he became afraid and immediately ran for his life. Understand this, my friends. I need to stop right there, and, and, and you need to hear what's going on in his life. Because when you are doing God's will, friends, that's not the time to be afraid. When you are doing God's will, that's really the time for you to affirm that nothing is impossible with God. When you are doing God's will, that's the time to declare, if God be for us, who can be against us? When you are doing God's will, that's the time to call out, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. When you are doing God's will, that's the time to acknowledge that you and God always equals a majority. You see, I like the way that, 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 that Mother to Son poem by Langston Hughes says it this way. Son, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor. But all the time, I've been climbing. I still climbing. Somebody hear me today because your life like Elijah may be at the point when you're running scared. Your life like Elijah may be at the point when the enemy is breathing down your neck. Your life, like Elijah, may be at a dead-end place. But in the words of Langston Hughes, it ain't going to be no crystal stair, but you keep on running. You keep on climbing. You keep on doing everything that God empowers you to do. Now, friends, understand the irony of this text is the story of Elijah's fear comes from a godless queen who don't have a god and does not have prophets. Let me say that again. The irony, he's running from somebody who does not have a god nor have support like he has from almighty God. But you see, there was some exhaustion and there was some discouragement and there was some hurt because Elijah was human. Let me say it like this. Even the strongest saints, y'all, have weaknesses. And if I'm talking to you right now, you just type right now, thank you, Reverend, for giving me some help. Thank you, Pastor, for encouraging me because even the strongest saints have some weaknesses. You see, spiritual depression strikes when we least expect it. And especially following on the heels of spiritual victory. For well, you see, after preparation, get ready for some temptation. Is that not what happened to Jesus in Luke chapter 4? After being in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, after being recipient of the Holy Spirit, baptized by the Father above, that after his preparation, he gets his temptation. Elijah, y'all, had assumed that after the victory at Mount Carmel, that Ahab would lead Israel in returning to the Lord. Elijah, y'all, probably assumed that the thoughts of Queen Jezebel would be cast out of the palace or that she would raise the white flag and surrender. But neither of those things happened. Ahab was as weak as ever and Jezebel was as evil as ever. So Elijah, y'all, he was disillusioned and ready to give up. But God, can you type but God? You see, but God always has a plan and God always has an out. God always has a point of deliverance and God always knows what's best for us all. It began, y'all, with some food and some rest. 
And I got to give somebody a major shout out and praise because you've let COVID-19 take you on a sabbatical of sorts and you've been spending more time with the word of Almighty God. A shout out to somebody who spent more time in the word than you have been worrying. More time studying than you have been flipping channels. More time on your knees than you have been raising hell in your home. Somebody ought to give God thanks for some food and some rest. And let me just say, my brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, uh, aunts and uncles, particularly on this Father's Day, in your effort to get up, God knows what you need. The Bible says that an angel fed him, let him sleep, woke him up again, and fed him some more. The angel saw what the Elijah needed, just like God sees what we need. You see, y'all, sometimes we need what we need is simply a good meal and a good night's sleep. Here it is, though. Here's a warning. Many times, many of us have been feeding what we should have been starving and have been starving what we should have been feeding. Many of us have been feeding what we should have been starving and we've been starving what we should have been feeding. For we should have been feeding our faith and starving our fears. We should be developing our character and not doubting God's hand. We should be crafting our gifts and not be paying attention to the critics. We should be shaping, sharpening our skills, y'all, and stop sulking in self-pity. You see, what you feed is what grows. What you invest in, you can get a return on. Don't ask God to give you a big bang blessing when you got an itty bitty prayer. Don't ask God to move mountains out of your way when you're looking at the sand hill that's right before you. No, you can do something. You can be something. You can say something. You see, it's all right, y'all, to ask for help, but every now and then you need to help yourself. For the Bible says if you don't work, you go ahead and type in right there, you don't eat, you don't get free cable, you don't get free meals, you don't get free car notes. Come on, help me. If you don't work, you don't get a whole lot of things. It's time for folk to get up and do something for themselves. You see, type get up right now because somebody needs to put this message not on your Facebook, but put it in your life. It's time for you to get up and make a difference. Get up and make a change. Get up and start doing all that God calls you to do. This, this message y'all of, of food and rest, it gave Elijah strength, much needed strength for a 40 day journey to the mountain that God had prepared for him. Where is this mountain? Mount Sinai, we know it as the place where God told Moses, take off your shoes for you're standing on holy ground. Where is Mount Sinai? It's the place where God allowed God's self to come past Moses so Moses could see God God and yet still it's the place where God spoke to Moses giving words of encouragement and commandments to live by it's also the place where God had to renew uh, the, the presence of, of Elijah it's the place y'all where God spoke to Elijah given presence given preparation and given purpose the Bible tells us is that as Elijah got some rest and as Elijah got some food and as Elijah got restored, y'all, Elijah understood his presence, understood his preparation, and understood his purpose. Come to the text because it helps us realize is that God is saying to Elijah, I need to restore you. So Elijah, you need to be in my presence. And to be in the presence of Almighty God simply means to have a state or a fact of your existence. The presence of Almighty God helps us realize that God has you in a place and a time such as this. In the presence of Almighty God, God is there to minister to you as you are able to minister to other folk. The Bible says is that God helped Elijah see that with him all things are possible. Recognize this, friends. I don't want you to miss this quote because Elijah's problem happened as he stopped looking to God and started looking to himself. 
Elijah, he's tripped up, he messed up, he slipped up because he started thinking about himself and started thinking less about Almighty God. And here's a warning I want you to get, y'all. An inward look without an upward look will always render an empty heart. An inward look, me, myself, and I, without an upward look, I look to the heavens and whence cometh my help, nor my help comes from the Lord, will always render an empty heart. What did David say? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Elijah, y'all, he needed a good dose of the truth. And I thank God that there are people in my life, and you got them in your life, who ain't afraid to tell you the truth. I thank God that you've got people who love you enough that you won't keep going down a dead end spiral. I thank God that you've got a sponsor who's able to put you back on track and keep you clean, straight, and sober. I thank God that you got a mama and a daddy, an auntie and an uncle, a grandpa and a grandma who help you recognize that the way to go is with Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Check this out, y'all. Don't want you to forget it because oftentimes when we get far and far away from God, that means that we don't hear God speaking to our hearts. Elijah, Elijah, y'all. He was more focused on deciding to give up his life and die than understand his purpose was to live. And you see, I got to give a shout out to Bishop T.D. Jakes because he says this in one of his sermons about decisions. He says decisions are more powerful than emotions. You have to have faith to move into your future. Your decisions, my friends, are in essence a bridge to your next action. Your bridge between your destiny and disappointment lies in your next decision. Your decision to get up, your decision to move up, your decision to go back to school, your decision to complete the task, your decision to stop telling yourself negativity, your decision to realize that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Your, your bridge to your destiny, y'all, lies in your next decisions. And your decision, again, comes with your purpose. Let me give a major shout out now, y'all, to the fathers on fire. Father's Day because I think there's some things we can learn about the presence and the preparation and the purpose in this text. Number one is that on Father's Day, we need to know that God is always in charge. And one of the things I call these the 12 commandments of Father's Day is you got to be yourself. Be yourself. Be the best you that you can possibly be. Don't, don't let anybody tell you what specifically you can or cannot do. Understand you are made in the image of almighty God. When you have a sense of presence, you recognize that not just being yourself, you can handle your business. Come on, somebody put a hand wave right there in the chat. Say, I'm going to handle my business. You're going to take, take business and be responsible. No excuses, no explanation, but truly given to the human that you are, handle your, be always be responsible. Men, fathers, particular this day, you need to be responsible. You need to tell your children and your grandchildren, try, try, and try again. It's not always easy, but when a task is once begun, leave it not until it's done. Be a matter, great or small, do it well or not at all. You need to let folk know, fathers, that there is great value in hard work. You see, the one thing I found for my daddy and my mama, that the only place you're going to ever find success before work is in the dictionary. So that means you got to roll up your sleeves, do some heavy lifting, do some knee bending, and get to work. What a great testimony, daddies, for your children to say, I saw my daddy get up every day of his life and go to work. And recognize the thing that the Bible says is that work comes before women. Let me back up and say that again. Genesis 2.15 says that God gave Adam a job to do and to work. God didn't give Adam woman until Genesis 2.18. Shout out to the brothers who are working. But here's the footnote. 
Working does not mean doing. Working means becoming. When a man becomes something, the man don't ever have to worry about being fired. You can't fire somebody from what they are becoming. You can't lay off somebody from when they are becoming. If a woman wants to be secure, brother, get you a gift and develop it in your work. The Bible says that room will be made for you, not for your degree, not for your money, not for your wealth, but for your gift. Your gift will make room for you. Brothers, hear what I'm saying. You've got to understand that education is the key. Fathers and mothers, make sure that your children and your children's children are reading. Cut off the television. You're being entertained by folk who want you to buy stuff you can't afford, to impress folk you don't like, to stuff that you don't need. Cut off the television. Pick up a book and, start, matter of fact, write your doggone book and give it to me and I'll publish it myself. Understand this. You've got to be to your children as your father's word to you. It's never too late to start again. Oh, hear what I'm saying. When you recognize your preparation, you will know that God has something in store for you and God is not through with you. God is always on the throne and God is always giving God's best to you. Always try to do your best, follow your heart and follow your dream. Just the three more I want to give them to you quickly. Procrastination is a thief of time. Why put off tomorrow? Because you see, tomorrow is what COVID-19 and, and the pandemic has taught me is tomorrow is not promised. I've been living in the presence, but let me tell you now, I'm living with urgency. Ur urgency. I don't, don't tell my doctor, but I, I, I eat fried chicken more now than I did before. Got urgency. Urgency. Please don't tell him, but I did have a steak at my, at my nephew's cookout last week. Ur urgency. Red meat. Red meat. I didn't see the red. Yes, urgency. Tomorrow is not promised. Now, I do run five miles a day because bro man got to look fit. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. But the point is urgency. Ur ha having God on your team always gives you the greatest teammate. No matter how tough life can be to you, friends, your relationship with God will always help you move mountains. I say this too, COVID-19, uh, 2020, this new decade, you need to have some fun. Quit putting it off talking about what you're going to do. No, sugar baby, you too old and you too tired, you too out of shape. Have some fun right now. Do something that brings joy to you on this Father's Day, do something to, that brings joy to the fathers or the mothers or the family in your life. Don't, don't ever let somebody tell you what you can't do because you're too old for that. Know there's some old folks still acting young. There's some young folk trying to act old. Have some fun. Now, number 11, oh, I got to get quickly here. My time's about up. Always put some, some money away for a rainy day. Quit trying to spend every dime you have. And you heard me say it before. Put some green money in a black bank. The only way that we can lift up our people, the only way we can support our communities, make sure that the dollar in the African-American community turns over and over and over before it leaves to go to somebody else's community. And here it is. Never forget the beauty of being a child. For the Bible says, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For such is the kingdom of all mighty God. You see, when you understand the presence and the, and the preparation and the power of God, you will understand your purpose, your purpose, your purpose. I got to give an editorial footnote here because someone had asked me about the riots and what is going on in this particular upheaval of our time. And I go to the quotation that Dr. King gave the students in Philadelphia in 1967 as he was talking about the riots. He says, I think America must see the riots they do not develop out of thin air. Dr. King says certain conditions continue to exist in our society which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. He says, but in the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. 
And what is it that America has failed to hear? Get this, in 1967, he says, it has failed to hear the plight of the African-American poor that has worsened over the last few years. It has failed to hear the, the, that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that the large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo than they are about justice, equality, and humanity. For I like the way the killer Mike says, why is it that we condemn Colin Kaepernick for taking a knee, never kneeling on the flag, but you put a flag on a bikini or a flag on the butt of somebody's pants or a flag on an album and you think that is noteworthy. No, it's des desecration any way you look at it. You got to recognize why are the riots going because it's the language of the street that is not being heard. And I like the way Dr. King ended his speech, his challenge. He says, we're not going to always condemn throwing Molikov cocktails into buildings and burning them down in the United States because in 1967, we were dropping y'all napalm bombs to people on Vietnam. What's the difference between a Molotov cocktail and a napalm bomb? What's the difference between a bomb coming from a plane and a bomb coming from your hand? Dr. King says, no, it's not burn, baby, burn, but learn, baby, learn, so you can earn, baby, earn. See, the difference is when you recognize your purpose, you will understand where God is leading you. Let me see if I can close my little sermon by helping you see what, what the quote in this sermon is all about. A setup is a setback. A setback is a setup for a Come back. These are words shared by Steve Harvey and T.D. Jakes and Joel Olstein and Eric Thomas. But these words really come, y'all, from the book title written by Dr. Willie Jolly, a 1999 book entitled "A Setup Is a Set a Setback Is a Setup for a Comeback." What Dr. Jolly simply says that adversity and challenge are life's way of creating strength. A setback is a setup for a comeback. Do Dr. Jolly, who was, who was uh, uh, the voice of commercials for, for black entertainment television, the voice of commercials for McDonald's, and the voice of commercials for Procter & Gamma, Dr. Jolly, y'all, was, was a, a professional musician. But as a professional musician was fired, and he had to take a checkup from the neck up and start over again. A professional musician was fired and he found himself having to change over again. A professional musician was fired and the news, y'all, he says that firing helped him come back. And I don't wish anybody to get fired, but I do know the people who've ever been fired before. And if you ain't ashamed this type, that's me right there in the chat box. You know what it means, the value of being rehired again. A person has ever lost something knows what it means to find it back again. A person who's ever put down knows what it means to get up again. And I like what Dr. Jolly says. He, he says to us, y'all, remembering most important that the windshield is always bigger than your rearview mirror. But also recognizing, y'all, is that oftentimes God, God will take us into a space and into a place and into a presence and into a situation to remind us that's where we need it to be. Because when you read the last part of chapter 19 of First Kings, you will recognize that because Elijah was faithful, God had already allowed him to anoint somebody else to be the king. Because Elijah was faithful, God had already called him to anoint Elisha as his successor. Because he was faithful over a few things, God had already allowed him to recognize his depression would not last, his devastation would not last win. He realized that his loss would not be his resume. He realized that his current situation was not to be his eternal damnation. Elijah, y'all, teaches us a valuable lesson that when we fall down, we can get up. 
Oh, that's good news today because I want to speak to some fathers who on this day you need to know that God has called you to be in a place and a space in the presence of your children. So God is saying, I need you to get back up. God is speaking to some family today who may be estranged from your father, but recognize that your father is still a gift of almighty God. So as you pray to God to relieve and release him from any of the vials of the the world that you will also acknowledge God for all that God's doing. Somebody hear what I'm saying. You may not have had a good fatherly figure in your life but there's been somebody be it male or female who's told you that you can get back up again. You can go on again. You can be strong again. Somehow, some way God has a way of working things out. And I just want to give and employ upon you on this Sabbath day that you will never let anybody discourage you. You will never let anybody pull you down. You will never let the Jezebels or the Ahabs in your life cause you not to remember your purpose. We're made in the image of Almighty God. And because we're made in the image of Almighty God, we have a resiliency inside of us to get back up. We're made in the image of Almighty God, a little lower than the angels, but well above the animals. So don't act like an animal when people get on your last nerve. Don't respond like an animal when things don't go your way. Don't, don't give back animal instincts. You give the love of Almighty God. God is calling somebody to get back up today. And it is my prayer that as you heard this word and received this word, that you will say, preacher, pastor, a, a chat room, I, I need to get back up. I need to get back up and do what God is calling me to do. I need to get back up and be more dedicated as a father, as a man. I'm looking at you this morning because I believe that not only that God wants you to get up, but God wants you to reach down and pick somebody else up. You see, the best thing that could ever happen is not that you get saved, but you lead somebody else to Christ. And so we pray on this Sabbath day. We pray that whatever day you watch this, either now or, or over and over again, that you will hear God saying, I've, I've got some presence I want to be in your life. And if you allow me to be in your life, I'm going to also prepare you for a great work ahead. And if you're prepared for that great work ahead, I'm now going to reveal to you my purpose. Take no thought of tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these other things should be added unto you. Do you know if you're desirous of prayer, you're desirous of a space or a place where you can grow in the Lord, we invite you to come and to be a part of this ministry. Just simply contact Pastor Lanson or Dr. Carroll in the chat box and they will let you know what it means and how you can be a part of this church. Thank you so much for your prayers, your continued support. Again, to our musicians, our staff, our technicians, and so many that continue to make this a great ministry. You know we love you. Join us for our morning prayer call every Monday through Friday. Be sure to join us also for Zoom Bible study, uh, for War Room Bible study. Join us today for our youth-led worship as well as our children's ministry all on the website. Thank you so much for worshiping with us at C.N. Jenkins. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven shine upon you. Have a wonderful day. I love you in the name of the Lord. God bless you.